And so I was a bit apprehensive at first because of my past life as administrator. Um, but I was excited too because I had been out of the school for three years in retirement. And so I missed the kids. I missed being in school. I missed uh, being with the teachers. And so the apprehension was because of my past life, um, I knew that if I would say yes as the university supervisor at Portland, I would have to keep my administrative hat someplace else because Angela's the administrator. <laughs> and so. So that was the concern, and so, but the exciting part was working with Angela, who I had a history with. We had done some professional development in the past, so I was familiar with Angela, the faculty, the school, and the kinds of work that was happening here. It was exciting stuff. When we came to the table, and it was talking about the next steps, because Portland couldn't continue in the structure without a liaison. Um, if, if we're gonna continue in the model, where we're nurturing teachers and pre-service teachers, we had to have a stronger fit and have that support in place where we are cultivating a reciprocal relationship. So we needed someone that could facilitate and bring about enhancing the structure. And we already could f feel that, that that John had had that same philosophical viewpoint. So I just immediately across the set table said, why don't you do it? <laughs> we seemed to have that hand in glove fit where we could talk and um, we could talk curriculum, we could talk instruction, we could talk about the aspects of the school because he had come from a similar school and um, talk in, in terms of how do we move teachers as learners, how, how do we move the school as a learning environment, yeah. and that was in place. Um, I've, I've always cultivated the concept here in the school that we as teachers are learners, that, that education is a science as much as it is an art. You get to know me, that um, because I knew that the question was, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. um, he's a past administrator, he's a past teacher, He's also representing the University of Louisville. So what's his purpose? And so last year, especially with the teachers, I needed to spend a lot of time with them and build trust, build a bond between us. And then at the same time, we had to continue to nurture our relationship as colleagues. I spent a lot of time, as, as this process has grown, just understanding what I've viewed as a clinical model. And my, my view of it is, is both that the university students are clients, my teachers are clients to me, and my students are clients to me. How do I make sure that, that I have systems in place to meet the needs of the clients, of those the university student clients, and that they're giving back to both my teachers and to my students? How am I making sure that my teacher's needs are met from the university and from me. And then how do I make sure that all of us are giving to the student? Intentional, and, and it was very uh, observable by me. He was making sure he got to know how the leadership team worked, how the systems of communication worked, um, the, the structures of how the teams were laid out, how how the teams communicated, how the office communicated with the staff, how I communicated with mm -hmm. He was very intentional. So he was able to come in then and as he observed and built relationships with me and then with all of the staff, um, he, he gained credibility with office staff, custodial staff, cafeteria staff, because he did um, first honor the structures that are in place but then became a part of those structures. Um. Well, I think we've already mentioned one. One is trust. You have to have that trust factor between the school and the university and whoever represents that. You have to have a relationship, and that comes from trust. You have to have that professional relationship, and collegiality comes out of that so that we're all going in the same direction using the stakeholders that we have available to us. We all have the same purpose, 
The purpose is to focus on the little kids in this elementary school. We want to move their academic um, abilities, their achievement forward. And so the question becomes, how are we going to do that together? Because Angela is also responsible for moving her faculty forward in order to move the little kids forward, and I'm responsible for moving the pre-service teachers forward. So how do we make that happen together? That comes through, I think, another tenet is the communication. I think we have great communication. And a lot of our best ideas come because we talk. <laughs> and nothing happens in the building until we do talk. Right, right. Yeah, um, we talk about everything before we move forward in our work. We all have the same purpose. The purpose is to focus on the little kids in this elementary school. We want to move their academic um, abilities, their achievement forward. The teachers here work hard, they're passionate, they're very well trained. So a lot of energy and work has been put in to, to raise the teachers to the level that they're at. However, we're always under that premise that we're continuously learning. So by bringing in the pre-service teachers who are receiving the latest, greatest research-based knowledge, they're bringing that to our staff from university personnel who are bringing the latest, greatest. Yet they're meeting from that clinical model the hands-on moment in time experiences. And as John said, he's hearing from me and hearing from my teachers. And in time, this is what's happening now. He takes back in his classes and to the university personnel, this is what they're saying is happening. So the university personnel then take back and do the research again. Um, we are giving back to the community, preparing these teachers to, to either come work here, come work in our community, be ready and prepared for next year generation of kiddos. But, um, I'm passionate about that because we have to lift our children up and in my opinion who better to do that than, than my teachers that, that we're, we're grooming. The teacher that's with them has to also um, gain some type of experience as well. That teacher has to gain in their ability to reflect on their practice. And if there's not that coaching experience with him coming as a supervisor, able to walk, either walk that teacher who's new to that position with a pre-service teacher or him coaching, um, for example, our new teacher in residence to do that, then the whole structure is not reciprocal and everyone, all clients aren't being lifted and ultimately the, the students not being lifted. Oh. And, John, and it, it makes me a better principal as I interact and learn and continue to learn and reflect with John and I reflect with my teachers, we continue and we model. Um, what better example well, of learning? The other thing that I wanted to mention too is we're pretty intentional about how we place our students, not just in the classroom, but our third semester students, the method students that come into the building, uh, which is the semester right before student teaching, we're selective. She, uh, because we're a pilot model, meaning that the third semester method students come into the building, they stay here for their student teaching semester. That in mind, Angela meets all of those that we've selected at the university level in an interview-like situation. And I won't uh, commit for them to be here at Portland until she gives the okay. Probably the thing I'm most excited about is when I went to Angela and I said, how can we help? And her comment last spring, it was, we need writing. And so we've been working collaboratively in the area of writing probably for the last year. So I'm excited to work with Amy, the Goal Clarity Coach, and Krista, the literacy coach and now Sarah as the teacher in residence to work out this three-year plan but the exciting piece is that as administrators in your building we're kind of formulating a plan but I'm working with them to work with the faculty so that it's a grassroots effort 
So the teachers, the entire faculty, is in on the formation of this plan. Um, and watch my teachers grow as they learn to reflect on their practice because that's what makes them better teachers. So, and it, it makes me a better principal as I interact and learn and continue to learn and reflect with John and I reflect with my teachers, we continue and we model. Um, what better example of learning? What, what better example can we give?